Major scales, that's what we're going to be talking about today on the tenor saxophone. I've got a handy PDF that you can download and use as a practice guide, plus I'll be sharing some tips on how you can practice your major scales so that you can learn them much more easily. Okay, lots to talk about, let's get stuck in. G'day, Nigel here. Hey, thanks for joining me for another session. Now, I get it, scales can be pretty boring, but they are essential to know as a saxophone player. And the reason they're essential is because every single thing you play on saxophone will be based on scales. So understanding scales is gonna help you to be a much better player and help you to learn faster as well. So scales are a big thing for us as saxophone players, and it's something we talk about a lot with our thousands of students inside sax school. And in fact, in there, we've got some really great five minute workouts that focus on scales. And they're super popular with our students because they get great results from them and it makes learning the scales actually quite easy and concise and short and fun. If you're not a member and you wanna check out those five minute workouts, then you can grab a 14 day trial at our website. So today we're doing it on the tenor saxophone. If you're an alto player, then check out my other lesson where I show you all the notes step by step on the alto sax. <laughs> Okay, so this is the way we're going to do it in today's lesson. We're going to look at all of our major scales in a single octave. And that's a great place to start because it gives us a chance to get all the notes right and really focus on our technique. Because once you've got that right, it's easy then to expand over your whole range and also to increase the speed. We're going to work through the keys around the cycle of fourths. All that really means is that for each consecutive scale, we'll either be increasing the number of sharps by one sharp or increasing the flats by one flat. The really cool thing about learning it this way is there's only one new note to learn for each consecutive scale. So that makes the learning process really easy. Now, one other thing I wanna mention really quickly, but it is super important to understand, is that every major scale is simply a pattern of tones and semitones, or whole steps and half steps. Now, we need to understand this because if we think about this while we're playing our scales, we will get used to the sound of that pattern, and that will help our ears to guide our fingers when we get into those difficult keys. Trust me on this, it's super important. So every major scale is a pattern that looks like this. Tone, tone, semitone, and then we've got another tone, and then another group of tone, tone, semitone. Or in American currency, that is whole step, whole step, half step, then a whole step, and then whole step, whole step, half step. So just think about this while we're playing through every major scale. Know that every major scale is the same pattern and get familiar with the sound of that pattern. So for our very first scale, let's look at G major. Now, you're probably thinking, well, what about C major, Nigel? Uh, but I figure you probably already know C major. C major is the easiest scale because there's no sharps and there's no flats. For C major, it's literally from C all the way up to C and back down to C again. It's probably the very first thing you learned on the saxophone. So let's start off by talking about G major. Now G major has just got one sharp, which is F sharp. We play the F sharp like this. So that's with our middle finger. It sounds like this. So let's play through that scale. Our next scale is D major, and this time we're gonna add the C sharp in. C sharp looks like this. That's right, there's no fingers whatsoever. In fact, it's the easiest note on the saxophone, no fingers down. So a C sharp sounds like this. And in the D major scale, we've got F sharp plus C sharp. Let's play it. A major is the next major scale, and for this one, we're gonna add G sharp. Now, G sharp is just like G, but we're gonna add our little finger down here. So it's really important to keep your hand position correct, keep that little finger close to your pinky key there. The G sharp sounds like this. So now we have F sharp, C sharp, and G sharp. Let's play it. Mm -hmm. 
On to E major now, and this time we're going to add the sharp D sharp. So D sharp, six fingers, and our little finger here. Really important to keep those fingers close to those keys as before. D sharp sounds like this. Okay, let's play the scale together. Our last sharp key is B major, and this time we're going to add the sharp A sharp. Now there's a couple of different ways, well there's a few different ways you can play A sharp, but I'm going to show you two of them. The first one is to use your two fingers like A, but add the sharp key down here, which is your bottom side key we do with our right index finger. Okay, A sharp. Another really common way is to use your B finger, but add this key here, which is your B flat key because B flat is the same as A sharp. So you've got this one, or you've got this one. They both sound the same. So choose one of those, and let's play through this scale, the B major scale, together. Remember here we've got F sharp, C sharp, G sharp, D sharp, and A sharp. Quite a lot to think about. Here we go. Rightio, let's move on and talk about our flat scales. Now the cool thing here is that all the flats we're going to learn, we actually have already learned them by working through the sharp scales because every sharp note can be spelled also as a flat note. That's something we call enharmonics in music. And it's basically, there's two different ways to spell every note. Now, the way to think about this makes it really easy to understand, I think, is to think about the distance between two notes. Let's say, for example, B and A. Now, there's two semitones or two half steps between B and A. So to go from A to B, we have to go up two steps, two half steps or two semitones. Now, to get to A sharp, we need to go up one of those semitones or one of those half steps, A up to A sharp, and that's exactly halfway between A and B. But we could also take B and go down a half step or a semitone to get to B flat. A sharp and B flat are exactly the same note, they just can be spelled two different ways. Now, the reason this is important is because in music there are some rules where if you're using a key that has sharps in the key signature, then we need to use sharp spellings. Alternatively, if you're using a key that has flats in the key signature, then it's always best to use flat spellings. And so that's why we've got the two different options for the way we spell notes. So let's get stuck in with our first scale, and that's F major. Now in F major, we've got just one flat, and that is B flat. You'll notice B flat's the same as A sharp that we've just learned. So you know how it sounds like. Let's play through the F major scale. On to B flat major now. B flat major has got two flats. We've got B flat that we've just learned, and we've also got E flat. So E flat here is the same as D sharp, using our little pinky finger. <laughs> So let's play through the B flat major scale. We've got B flats and E flats. So make sure you choose your B flat fingering. Let's hear what it sounds like together. Rightio, on to E flat major. Now this time we're going to add the flat A flat. And A flat is the same as G sharp. So remember, that's with our little finger down here. Let's play through the E flat major scale, where we've got B flat, E flat, and A flat. A flat is our next flat major scale, and this time we're going to add the flat D flat. Now, D-flat is the same as C-sharp, absolutely no fingers down. It's the easiest note on the saxophone. So now we've got B-flat, E-flat, A-flat, and D-flat. Right, here we go. Let's play through the A-flat major scale. <laughs> Now 
Now we're starting to get some trickier keys. Now we're on to D flat major. And this time we're adding in the flat of G flat. You're not going to see G flat very often because G flat is actually the other way of spelling F sharp. So we know F sharp, it's just with our middle finger down here. Uh, but because this is a flat key, we need to spell our G flats, our F sharps as G flats. So that's the one we've got in this key. So let's try playing through the D flat major scale. Just be careful here, we've got B flats, E flats, A flats, D flats, and G flats. Here we go. <laughs> We've got just one more flat scale, and this is G flat major. This is a really tricky key because there are a ton of flats. In fact, nearly every note, except for one actually, is flattened in this scale. Uh, and the new flat that we're going to introduce for this scale is C flat. Now, C flat's kind of a crazy spelling. You're not going to see this very often. C flat is actually the same as the note B, just normal old B, because we only have a half step or a semitone between C and B. But because of the way the scale works, we see C flats. So let's just go through the notes in this scale before we play it, just to make sure that we know everything. So we're starting off on G flats, the same as F sharp. We're going to A flat, same as G sharp. B flat, same as A sharp. C flat, which is the same as B. D flat, same as C sharp. E flat, same as D sharp. Then we've got an F just for ease, and then a G flat, the same as F sharp. Okay, loads and loads of flats. Take a minute to get all those fingerings right, and then when you're ready, let's play through that scale together. Here we go. <laughs> So there we have it. Those are all the major scales on the tenor saxophone. Now this is just a starting point and an introduction really so that you can get to know all of the scales, get all the fingerings right, and get yourself off to a good start with scales. But there's so much more you can do. And to be honest with you, a lot more that you can do that's a lot more fun as well. So first of all, we need to think about expanding our scales to be over our full range. We need to think about increasing our speed. But there's also rhythmical things you can do. You can practice your tonguing. You can work on all sorts of things with your major scales. So there's a ton of resources inside Sax School for members that will really help you with learning scales and making scales more fun, which in turn will really boost your technique and your overall ability on saxophone. If you want to check that out and you're not a member yet, then go grab our 14-day trial. That's over at mcgillmusic.com. And also, don't forget to subscribe if you're new here, because I'm putting videos out like this all the time. Don't want you to miss them. And I'd love to see you uh, come and get some use out of another video that I'm making here on my channel. Okay, have some fun. Keep practicing hard. I'll catch you next time.